everybody, welcome to Archer's Garage and in the shop today we've got this nice Craftsman 6.5 horsepower um, power propelled 4-in-1 plus, right? Well, I put this machine together a couple of weeks ago, sold it to the customer and, and he's having some problems with it. So we need to find out what's going on. I'm going to tell you, uh, essentially in this, this is won't start. He said it ran a little rough and then, uh, and then it won't start anymore. It kind of shut off and then it won't, won't run anymore. <clears throat> so I looked at the machine really quick. I said, you know, usually it's a fuel issue this time of year. It's almost always the case. No, I did, like you said, I went and I got a new gas can or clean something, I don't know, something like that and filled it up. Had a full tank of gas and we're gonna try to see if we can figure it out. Now we're gonna go through the diagnosis on this together, guys. If this is a, it won't run, all right? And I just gave you the basic symptomology and the brief conversation I had with the customer. So now as a detective, right, whether you're a detective or a private eye or a lawnmower mechanic, you take the statements, right, from the suspects, right, and then you go and you look for yourself. You've got to find out what's going on. Um, and so that's my job as a mechanic. You've got to go where the evidence takes you. So we're going to go through that together. Um, it's not about somebody lying to you, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's really, a lot of times people will tell you stories. They'll, sometimes they'll lie to you. And also sometimes to the best of their knowledge and their understanding, they're telling you what they perceive in their reality is. And Bottom line is you gotta fix the machine. So I'm gonna tell you straight off, what we're gonna be looking at today is a couple of things. We're gonna be looking at the ignition system, the ignition potential issues there, and we're gonna be looking at the carburetor because we have a rough run and then a no start condition. So we're gonna look at those things together, stay tuned, and let's find out what's wrong with it. I think I know what it is. Can you guess? All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. I pulled it a few times and I just pulled off the air cleaner and I'm looking in here, and I'll show you in a little bit, but I can see that the choke blade is closed, okay? So we know we're okay there. Let's pull it a couple more times, and then we're gonna spray some starting fluid in it and see if she kicks. Now, I smell fuel, so it could be that it's not burning, and we might wanna take the choke off with a screwdriver, but let's try this first. Okay. All right, so she won't start. Let's pull the plug on it. So, all right, we got a wet plug. So spark could be an issue, all right? And it smell, smell it? it? Smells like gas. So it's either the plug or the igniter, right? The magnetron. And they do go bad when they get a little older. So one of the things you could do is you could clear it. Now ether evaporates quick. So you could put some ether in there and now pull it over. Now normally I would use my air compressor, right? To blow out any extra fuel that's in there. The end of the plug looks good. All right, I got a nice new plug. Let's just put that in there. She came out nice, it's a nice shape. But you know, for the money that I charge that these people are willing to pay, you can't replace everything. You can go to a tune-up shop around the corner, you know, the Loper's uh, Supply and Pair, and they get like $125 to do a tune-up on a lawnmower. And uh, it better be running because a tune-up is not a repair. All right, now let's fire it. Let's give it a pull and see what it does. Okay, let's, let's give it a little bit of shot shot. All right, we gotta bring it in on the bench. Most likely, it's not sparking, and it's most likely the coil. Now, we want to take the hat off, because the other thing we want to check is to make sure that over here, and I'll show you this, the ignition kill is here. And sometimes, it will pull back all the way. So let's just take a quick look. All right, so I took the top off, which is just two small screws. 
So put those to the side. And then, of course, the air cleaner and air cleaner mount. And don't lose these. And then this guy, which is just the cover. This is, uh, this is how you adjust on this model. How you adjust the, R the RPM. And uh, so this cover just comes right off. And it's easy to make an adjustment there without taking everything else off. Take that out of our way. Um, we can see that the choke is working fine. Remember, I checked all this, so I suspect the coil. Now he's got a full tank of gas, so if you have a full tank of gas, uh, you're, you're going to want to either spill it out or suck it out or something. We're going to suck it out um, because we got to move the tank, and if it starts to spill and leak, it's going to make one big mess. So I might as well start sucking that out right now. And then we got a bolt underneath here, and then uh, which is uh, I think it's 10 millimeter. Yeah, and we got a bolt. Right underneath here that we gotta loosen up. Because we gotta pull this cover off to get to the magneto. The magnetron. See? I'll just take this one off right now. And then we've got three up top, which I'll show you. Alright. Now it's not gonna come out fully yet. There's a bushing. Because we gotta loosen up the tops, but I just wanna show you I have the tool in my hand. I get it? Yeah. And here's the bushing, all right? So put that to the side. Let me suck the fuel with my suction device. And we don't want to lose it, right? Because it's worth a lot of money now. Suck it. All right, let me get this out. All right, this is what was down in the bottom of the tank down here. That's water. That's water. Let me take some pictures of that. All right, so you can see what I've done, right? I've got the plug, new, our new plug. I've got a wire clipped to the grounding electrode, which is connected to the body of the plug. And then you're gonna to try to find a good spot, although I painted this, but we need to find a good spot that is mounted to the chassis. Now, I don't care for that area. Um, the, this might work, right, the muffler. And I'm just kind of rotate it around a little bit, because even though there's a gasket, there's still the bolts that have to go in. Now let's turn the lights off and let's give it a pull and we want to check. So it fell off as you saw, but then I clamped it. When I'm just trying to show you guys a way that you can use uh, some simple stuff. Now that should have worked. We want to go a little bit deeper. I don't think the water was the issue. Although it is an issue, we certainly don't seem to have spark. So we're going to go a little bit deeper, and that's why I'm pre prepping it out. But again, I wanted to just show you guys, if you don't have a spark tester, you can kind of make one from a plug, a known good plug. you got a clamp. you got somebody to help you. Don't have anybody to help me. Here's a tip, guys. If you're by yourself and you can't see it, take your cell phone, try to prop it up somehow. I don't know, maybe a lot of us have these little stands for our cell phones. Do it in the dark, get your cell phone close, pull over the machine, and then check out your file, right? And look to see what your movie says. Let's take this off now. We're going to take this cover off. And look, it's been setting for a while, but you see the water is starting to come out of suspension, and it's starting to settle down here. All right, so these are like quarter, five sixteenths, I forget what they are. I'll tell you that. Nine millimeter is the equivalent. But a lot of these sizes, there's three up here. Uh, run concurrent and you know guys I don't pay attention most of the time it, you know after a while like you would think you would know the sizes yeah and then you do it for so long that you just forget like you don't even care so I'm gonna pull this out of the way just enough and now there's one more up here it's holding the dipstick in okay and I'm just going to take a screwdriver and just pry on the dipstick area a little bit just to pick it up and move it. There's a little keeper that, like a little lock. Uh, I don't want to take the dipstick out all the way. I don't want to splash oil. All right, now we're going to get to these guys. All right, there's two here. There's two in the back. Same, same thing. Uh, I think it's 5 sixteenths is one size. This is 10 millimeter, 3 eighths. I'm sorry. 
but you see, notice the sizes run concurrent. Now, I put these on there with one of these tools, right? So yours might be difficult to get off, put a little spray lube on. Um, I do, a lot of times when I take these things apart, I do use my Zippo gun um, to take these off, but I know that I've had these on here. But this is a customer. So it's my machine. Let's get it out of our way. Just a quickie. I'll keep it out of our way. Now with the bolts out, just lift it up and voila, see? Now you might struggle a little bit because yours hasn't been off. Yours is gonna have a lot of dirt and we'll test it, but my suggestion is, is that after you test it, and you do all of this, right, you're gonna to wanna to clean it. Whether it's with compressed air or grab a little bit of super clean and a hose, and because these are air-cooled engines and you need to get yours clean and ready to go. So don't just stop here and go, oh, who cares about the dirt? No, dirt's important. Now, um, this is our automatic choke system and I've already checked that out, so I know that's working fine. What we're gonna do now is I wanna look to make sure that I'm gonna show you that we are properly disengaged and engaging on the switch over here. So I wanna get the other camera in and try to show you that. There's a little tang right here. And as this ramps up, it lifts this up. And I'll show you that. So I gotta go do it. I wanna show you. And as it ramps up, it'll, it'll provide a cutoff. But when it's in the down position, like it is now, the switch is down, and that rocker is back. In other words, the brake is off, okay? There should be no grounding of this wire, this coil wire. Now, if you're not sure, you can take the coil wire off. You can either take it off from here, or you can take it off from back there, okay? And we're gonna do a test on that, but let me just show you how that works. Now, usually the problem is when cables stretch is that they don't, yeah, see, look. That's our problem, right? For some reason or another, this cable is damaged and it's not allowing it to come back far enough. See, and look, when he did it, something here damaged this cable, all right? You can see it over here, it damaged this cable. So either it stretched or something happened over here, but let's, let's put another cable on and we'll retest. So it's very hard to see with the cover on. All right, so I think I have a cable, a new one. Let me give you some tips. So I have the bail pulled back. You can use a clamp like this one or something, but I also have Velcro. So the bail's pulled back. I'm gonna shove this screwdriver in right here, right? The brake is pulled away, and maybe your cable is broken, but if you're having a spark issue, it's not broken, it's, it's stretching or something's not right in here. Um, so I got back out of the way. Now I'm gonna release the bail, taking the Velcro off the top. Pull that bail back. Now this way I've created a little bit of slack. So now we have these locks here and you'll see them. We just have to depress them. So we wanna depress them with one pair. And with another pair, just pull back. Now this cable might fit on a different machine. I, I don't. I think it's just stretched. It's not quite the right cable. Let's see if our new cable is any good. Now, if you want, you can put a little bit of white grease on these cables. So I'm going to put just a little bit of white grease on that end, and a little bit of white grease on this end for the customer. Okay. Now with the white grease on. Now some of these cables, they have, they can go through some of these uh, pathways. So I just want to see, there's one down here. And the longer cables, you know, the, these are the Chinese cables. That's all you're really going to get today. Uh, especially the ones that are reasonably priced. So just push, push it right in. We're good there. Now let's see how she fits up top. I'm not going to show you that right now, but let me work on that. 
So on this ma model, I've routed it through here first to get to there, snapped it in there, brought it up this way, and you hook it on the bale up here first, and I line up the hole, and then you gotta make sure it goes in all the way. Right, and it snaps right in. Now we're gonna pull it back, and I'm gonna Velcro it. And then we can come over here, take the screwdriver out. Let's exercise it and see how it feels. Take a look and see if it's clearing. Uh, it feels a little bit better. Yeah, it clears. I want to show you that. I'll get you in close. I want to show you how much it clears. See how much further back it goes? Okay. Way further back. Look at that. I'm trying to hold the camera steady for you guys. See it over here? I can get my screwdriver in there. Now let's hook this wire back up and test it. All right, let's get that wire back in. So just to press it down and slide the wire back in the hole. All right, and then go back and forth a little bit to scrape it a little, right? And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll just give it a bend. That's it, so now let's give it a test. All right, fellas, I'm gonna give it a pull. We set it up just like before, all right? Bale is pulled back. Let's pull this thing. Um, of course, I have to spin it. But just to show you. There we go. Not bad, decent spark. All right, guys, I got the plug back in. We're ready to start putting it back together. Same procedure. Right, just, just the opposite way. We'll start off with this guy, and like I said, please guys, clean it out. If I come over there, and I find out that you didn't clean it out, Uncle Arch is gonna be very upset. That's upset. Put a little bit of lubricant on, a little oil, or no seas or whatever. In case you gotta come back in here again, you might have noticed that yours were really rusty, and they're hard to get out. And we'll test it in a little bit. All right, let's give it a kick. It's all back together, let's see what happens. Alright, bales pulled back. Let's drop the bowl and make sure that there's no water still sitting in the bottom of it. Okay, so we've pinched off the fuel line. Just took this off here. It's three bolts, one here and two on the carburetor. And that way I can, you know, you don't have to, but it's just going to be harder to work and to control everything. <clears throat> so for a few bolts. All right, this should allow us to dribble whatever might be in there out. Looks like there might be a little bit of dirt in there too. He definitely used it. Remember, I make everything clean, so. Yeah, see all the crap in the bottom? He's got crap in his tank. Look at that. There's water in it. I'll take a picture of that. Might be a little overexposed. Hold on, let me get the other camera. I sprayed out a lot and I got in here and sprayed good you know in here and then I tried to get up in here now and up in through this jet passage where the main jet goes okay and then I took 
this off and let it drain a little bit. We're going to drain a little bit more, but let me let me change out the pan. The pan's getting full. And let it purge. Washed out all the junk that was in here. I blew this out, right? Also, I got my poker, which you can get these on Amazon. Get them in there. Everything's all blowed out. Let me put uh, <clears throat> this away and I'll let it drain a little bit more. I want to capture that in something. All right, clean out my pan again. I'm just going to let it drip a little bit longer just to make sure. It should be okay now. I don't see anything going in there. She looks good now. All right. But I think we're okay. All right, so I know it might be hard to see. I'm going to be blocking some of you view guys. I can't help it. All right, try to get that gasket up there. Sometimes they fit a little tighter. And you just got to make sure it's fitting flush. And then carefully, a little harder to do, you know, this way, but that's why I say it's easy to have, to take that cover out of the way, the air filter housing, put that up, trying to find the hole, so most common issues are ignition and dirt. Carburetor dirt. Make sure that bowl looks like it's fitting right and the gasket's not peeling out to the side. And again, I use a small quarter inch drive because you don't want to over tighten it. That's good. These are half inch on these bowls. I forget, like I said, I always forget. I don't care anymore. Let's let the fuel in and give it a minute, All right? And let it fill up and check for leaks. Just give it, give it a couple of minutes, go do something, go grab a cup of coffee or something before you put everything else on. And then you wanna make sure everything is dry. See, everything is dry because I wiped it with the tissue. And then we're gonna come back. Now, if you have to take your carburetor off, if your problem is a carburetor rebuild, that's a different, <clears throat> that's a different episode. Okay, the three bolts, and I'm just going to tighten them up. I like to use a nut driver, but you may need to use something a little bit more stout, right? Uh, sometimes they put Loctite on these, and sometimes it's just the gook from years. So if you've never had yours off before, be careful. There is a gasket. Now, if this one is automatic choke, now you may have a primer over here, in which case you're going to need to replace the gasket. <clears throat> and if you're having a hard time, when you push the primer bulb, Right when you're looking at it just like this with the cover off, if you don't see moisture down in the throat of the carburetor, you know, gasoline forming down there in, in that area, there, uh, you've got a problem. And that is very common. Check out my, uh, my video on that and how to deal with primer bulb issues. A lot of people like it. Um, I get good compliments on how to deal with the fix on that. Again, that's another issue. Uh, but we don't have to worry about that here. Uh, the gasket is just to seal out dirt. It's the same gasket that the primer bulb uses. You can get them, by the way, you can get those gaskets online. <clears throat> All right, let's give it a test. Let's bring it down. No leaks. Bail back. Let's see. <laughs> Right, it's looking good. Now, keep in mind, guys, there are other problems that can occur from you know, just all manner of things that can occur why it won't start. So this is a, you know, won't start, how to make it run. Uh, and we covered two things, carburetor and the cable. And the cable is something that a lot of people overlook. It can stretch, it can come off. <clears throat> if it's a broken cable, that's another story. I took all the stuff off so I could show you the cable switch that's in there. And it makes it just easier for me to check things um, to replace a broken cable, you don't have to take all this stuff off. But to get in there and see the switch, and for me to show it to you and to see that maybe the cable stretched, 
you're going to have to take that stuff off, right? Because you need to get in there and see it. It's covered by the uh, pole starter engine cover housing. Um, <clears throat> that's what you're going to have to do, and it's not that hard. Get in there and clean it out, guys. Please don't let, make me come over there. So and uh, and then the carburetor. Even though the customer said I put, I did what you said. I put new fuel in, a fresh can. Look, I don't know. Okay, you guys saw it. There's dirt in there. I didn't, that's a lot of dirt. Um, I go over these things with a fine tooth call. Many of you guys that watch my channel know what I do to these things. I didn't put the dirt in it. Okay, I go through great pains. I know guys that do this, and even guys on YouTube and Nate's even said. They don't even do what I do to these gas cans, they, you know, these gas tanks. I rinse them with the hose. Could there have been a little bit of water left over in there from the hose and rinsing it? Yes, that could be, but that wouldn't, that's not dirt. And so, super clean in the tank, high pressure hose. If the tank looks fairly clean, I put fuel in it. Put the cap on, I put a plug on the end of the tank, right? And I shake it around in different directions for a minute, and then I dump it, and then I blow it. It's the biggest problem I see at the beginning of the year is debris and water from the gas can. They don't clean off the top. Let me give you a tip. <clears throat> if it's something I'm building, I have a funnel with a standard paint filter. If you want, you can take one of those C19 masks, right, that we've been using. You can use all kinds of things, a sock, a, a terry rag, but these are cheap, right? You can, one of these lasts me like almost all season. <clears throat> now, generally speaking, um, if I'm going to fill my machine, I don't like spilling all over the place, so I usually put everything into a mason jar first. And then I pour, even though if it looks clean, I still pour it through this thing. If you don't put it in, guys, you don't have to get it out. I'll see you guys on the next one. I Hopefully you guys uh, got something out of this. Archer's Garage. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe.